A very warm welcome to our program. You are watching One TV News Bulletin in English at 5. I'm Yanni Mutsios. These are today's top stories. Former Prime Minister Kostas Karamanlis addressed the public in a rare appearance at Megaro Musikis on Wednesday, where he denounced the Russian aggression in Ukraine and Turkey's aggressive attitude in the region. Leader of Turkey's opposition, Kemal Kiricaloglu, backed up President Tayyip Erdogan over his claims on Eastern Mediterranean and the Aegean Sea. Tax authorities will be able to cross-check shopping receipts online via mobile applications expected to be launched in June by the Independent Public Income Authority. First degree court in Athens rules out any power cuts to vulnerable consumers following a lawsuit filed by consumers organizations challenging the adjustment clause on power bills. United States State Department issued a statement urging Turkey to abstain from any rhetoric questioning the sovereignty of Greek islands amid the latest remarks both from Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan and Ministry of Foreign Affairs Mevlut Çavuşoğlu that if Greece does not demilitarize the eastern Aegean islands, Turkey will challenge their sovereignty. The sovereignty and territorial integrity of all countries should be respected and protected. Greece's sovereignty over these islands is not in question, State Department statement reads. We continue to encourage our NATO allies Greece and Turkey to work together to maintain peace and security in the region and to resolve differences diplomatically. We urge our allies to avoid rhetoric that could further raise tensions. Greece and Turkey are both strong partners and key NATO allies to the United States, State, State Department said. Coming up next, former Prime Minister Kostas Karamanlis addressed the public in a rear appearance at Megaro Musikis on Wednesday, where he denounced the Russian aggression in Ukraine and Turkey's aggressive attitude in the region. Leader of Turkey's opposition, Kemal Kiricaroglu, backed up President Tayyip Erdogan over his claims on Eastern Mediterranean and the Aegean Sea. It is imperative that we increase pressure in the Mediterranean and the Aegean. These things do not just happen by sailing off a ship and then withdrawing. We think that Biden invites you. If you have the guts, take a step forward for the islands which have been taken over and for those that have been militarized. We will be back you up, head of Turkey's opposition said, late on Wednesday night at the Grand National Assembly. Stay with us, there is more to come. Former Chancellor of Germany, in her first public speech since leaving office about six months ago, described Russia's war on Ukraine as a barbaric war of aggression. Former Prime Minister Kostas Karamanlis addressed the public in a rare appearance at Megaron Musikis on Wednesday, where he denounced the Russian aggression war and Turkey's aggressive attitude in the region. Karamanlis was a guest of honor at the Women's NGO Panathinaiki. Invited to talk about Greece and Europe in the vortex of great changes, the former Prime Minister said Turkey has opted to perform the regional troublemaker's role, whereas he criticized those who continue to treat Greece and Turkey in the same manner, indirectly referring to the United States and the European Union. Karamanlis commended that no compromise issues with Turkey should be on the table and that any grievances or concerns that need to be discussed with Turkey are that on maritime delim delimitation and the continental self, which can only be addressed by the International Court in Hague. Former Prime Minister noted that Turkey is a revisionist country, defying international treaties in order to become the regional superpower, as proven by Turkish military involvement in Iraq, Syria, the Caucasus and Libya. In light of these actions, Karmali said it is unacceptable to treat Greece and Turkey as, equal, uh, as equally responsible for the current tension. Kosas Karmalis referred to the war in Ukraine, condemning Russia's invasion, which clearly violated the international law. Karmalis pointed to some parallels between the invasion of Russia in Ukraine and the Turkish invasion in Cyprus, though the Cyprus invasion was never in a similar way. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has claimed 243 children have been killed so far in the war and 200,000 children have been forcefully taken to Russia, including children from orphanages, children taken with their parents and those separated from their families. Zelensky made note of International Children's Day during his nightly video address to the nation on Wednesday, claiming 243 children have been killed, 446 have been wounded and 139 are missing. Speaking in relation to the 200,000 children believed to have been forcefully taken to Russia, he said 
that the purpose of this criminal policy is not just to steal people, but to make those who are deported forget about Ukraine and unable to return. Ukraine cannot be conquered, our people will not surrender, and our children will not become the property of the occupiers, Zelensky said. Former Chancellor of Germany, in her first public speech since leaving office about six months ago, has described Russia's war on Ukraine as a barbaric war of aggression, which amounted to a far-reaching turning point. Angela Merkel said whilst she was reluctant to give her views from the sidelines as a former German, German Chancellor, she could not avoid talking about the most glaring breach of international law in the history of Europe since the end of the Second World War. Speaking at the gathering of German trade unionists in Berlin on Wednesday night, Merkel said, My solidarity goes out to Ukraine, which has been attacked and raided by Russia. Merkel stressed that there was no doubt as to Ukraine's right to self-defense. Former German Chancellor did not respond to the widespread criticism both at home and abroad, particularly since the start of the invasion, offered her own central role whilst in government towards Establishing, establishing the now defunct Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline, of reinforcing Germany's reliance on Russian energy, or for failing to recognize the extent of the ambitions of Russian President Vladimir Putin. There is more to come on this program. A degree court, first degree court in Athens ruled out any power cuts to vulnerable consumers following a lawsuit filed by consumers' organizations challenging the adjustment clause on power bills. Tax authorities will be able to cross-check shopping receipts online via mobile applications expected to be launched in June by the Independent Public Income Authority. Retail shopping receipts will bear a QR code. Tax authorities using their mobile devices such as tablets, mobile phones and QR readers will be able to scan the receipt and cross-check their authenticity online. In case an offence has been committed, the mobile app will be transmitting in real time the details both of the seller and the receipt, resulting to the identification of counterfeit details. First, we court in Athens ruled out any power cuts to vulnerable consumers following a lawsuit filed by consumers' organizations challenging the adjustment clause on power bills. The court ruled that no power cuts is permitted on vulnerable customers' households till the Supreme Court of Greece has reached a final decision on the adjustment clause. Vulnerable customers are elderly people over 70 years old on the conditions that they live with another family member of the same age or customers with severe health issues or others living in remote areas. Areas. The temporary order issued by the court will be valid until July 6, when the suit filed by the consumers' organizations is taken before the Supreme Court. Three people died in a multiple collision in Kavala in northern Greece on Thursday morning. Eyewitnesses said they saw two men driving a car and crashing into a van parked outside the pavement while the driver was offloading cargo boxes. There was a pursuing progress. We never realized how the car lost control and crashed into the van, bystanders said. The car drove right under the van and got stuck. As a result, the two passengers died instantly, eyewitnesses told the police. Ms. Olga Abadzia, deputy mayor of the Pagio municipality, said that the car in pursue, was in pursuit by the police, has exceeded the speed limit and crashed into the van driver, who landed a few yards away from the accident spot. He died instantly, Abadzia said. The car shortly after the crash wrapped in flames. Police, fire brigade and ambulance attended the incident. This is all from us for now. Next news bulletin in Greek at 6 o'clock. Thank you very much for watching.